All right, and welcome back to another video. So today you join me uh, from my kitchen, um, uh, mainly because I don't have any room to do this in the office, so we have to do it in here. So behind me, I want to talk to you about my humidity controlled uh, cabinet. So the reason why I got, I want to go into the reasons why I got it, um, the reasons why you should probably look into them, and um, any other little things as well um, that I come up with, because we're doing this unscripted. So let's get started. So the reason why I got this cabinet is I was having problems with my camera gear. Um, because I use a, a, a leaf shutter system, um, it's more prone to um, moisture and damp conditions um, and temperature because the leaf shutter system uh, works differently to your conventional shutter system that you've got in Sony, Pentax, uh, Canon, Nikon, um, all those other brands as well. So you've got, so Hasselblad uses a leaf shutter. So what that is, is it's these three, these three blades that come over one another, they come in contact and they uh, form, they actually cut off the light and then reset. Uh, whereas your conventional shutter system uh, works as a curtain. So you've got, uh, you've, got an upper cut, you've got the upper and you've got the lower. So for a long exposure, the bottom one drops and then it exposes and then as the image is done, the top one comes down. Um, when you use a faster shutter speed, uh, it basically comes down like that and the faster you go the smaller that gap is and it reads over the sensor so yeah the Hasselblad system is quite different and I'm not affected by sync speeds or anything like that because I can go to the maximum shutter speed on these cameras because of the way it works so um, yeah back into the cabinet so yeah the reason why I got it is because I was having problems with my gear I contacted I joined a Hasselblad uh, group and uh, was talking about my problem they'd never really heard of it before and I was trying to work out what was going on. I thought it was the uh, adapter that I use because I use a Hasselblad X1D uh, with the adapter so I can use my H-glass because I love the H-glass over the XCD glass. And, um, and I also had two lenses and I'm slowly building up a little collection of H-glass as well. Um, yeah, so I was having this problem and I was trying to work it out. I was, Hasselblad were asking me to send the gear over but I was thinking I only had this problem mainly in summer or when it was really wet. Um, I, when it was dry, I never had any problems. So I thought, oh, maybe I'll look into maybe humidity control. So I was looking into silica gel packs because I said I have them in the camera bag, and most of the time it's good. But um, more of the times when it's wet, so I was looking into like little um, troughs as well. We can have silica gel, and then you know put your put your, put your camera gear inside. Um, but I wasn't too sure on that. And then I found across, and then I came across these, uh, which are electronically controlled. So you can actually dial in your um, your humidity. So the humidity uh, that um, the uh, Siru and uh, any ca um, company recommends to store your gear at is 45 to 50 percent humidity. Anything lower than that, you'll start to damage uh, rubber seals and components on your camera system. So uh, that's why I've got this set to about 45 percent humidity. Um, so yeah. Um, Let's uh, go inside. So what this comes also with is a key, so you can actually lock this cabinet so it's nice and secure. But I think if anyone wanted to really get into this, they can easily break this thin bit of glass on the front. So we'll open it up inside. So when you open up this cabinet, you'll find out that you've got this nice seal around it, which, is, which forms a nice airtight seal, because this is an airtight container system, apart from the uh, little bit of uh, silica sort of unit down at the bottom which is electronically controlled and it uses about 17 watts of power. Uh, so a very low uh, wattage, uh, so you don't have to worry about expensive energy bills. So in here we've got our three shelves and we can use the bottom one as a, a shelf as well. They supply us with this nice soft foam, um, which is really nice, uh, so it protects our gear. So on the top one here I've got all my I've got most of my lenses, so I've got three of my Hasselblad lenses. I've got my 55 and my 50 to 110. 10, my 28, and my 150, um, and they are. And there is quite a bit of weight on the shelf, and these, these shelves do a really nice job um, of keeping it all supported. Um, it does have a nice little LED light up here, as you can probably see, um, but it doesn't actually. It only just lights up the top here. It doesn't light up the rest of the cabinet. And what I might think, what I'm thinking of doing it is running a light down here, so I can actually see more into my ca into my cabinet. On here I've got mainly my cameras, so I've got my X1D, I normally have my M50 in here as well, 
but since we're recording on the M50, I've got also another lens, I've got my adapter for the X1D, I've got another lens on my um, Hasselblad which is the XCD 45mm, uh, I've got some batteries as well because it's always, always good to keep your batteries um, in the cabinet for storage. On here, in my next shelf, I've got my drone stuff, so I've got my batteries, my controller, and the little drone, the little Mini 2, which I absolutely love. So if you haven't seen that, I actually made a video on this and why I like it and the imagery that I've created with it. So if you are interested, I'll link it down below and you can go and check it out. Uh, I've got my little G7X Mark II here. I don't really use it, but I'm going to use it a bit more when it comes into the field of work. Uh, just as a little, uh, nice little camera to travel with as well, and my little Sony action camera. Down here, I've got my all my filters. Um, I've got my filter holder, I've got some lens cloths down here, I've got my little uh, sound recorder, my hand recorder, so um, yeah, this is a pretty handy little thing. Um, and I'm going to use that more this year for when it comes, I'm going to get a little lapel mic so I can record to that. Um, I was looking to the Rode mic uh, wireless, I think, Go thing, um, but Thomas Eaton's having problems with that, so it sort of um, made me sway towards that, and I can actually work um, in a better way as well with this. I've also got more mic. I've got my other mic, so I've got my little, what was this, the video micro, the Rode one, uh, with the dead cat on there. And I've got another one here, this is called the Rode Stereo Mic Pro, or so Video Mic Pro, so yeah, nice little mic on there. Good for getting those uh, background sounds. Um, yeah, and little, other little bit, bits and pieces. I put the bits and pieces down there recently because I wanted to. Um, okay. Because I always seem to be transferring our stuff from one bag to another. I uh, put my main stuff down here that I want to transfer between bags. And um, yeah, it just, just works and keeps everything organised. I've got my memory cards as well somewhere in here. Um, I can't remember, I think it's maybe on the top shelf behind these lenses. Um, but yeah, so it's a really useful cabinet. And if you are thinking about maybe getting one of these, um, what it can be useful as well is. Uh, so if you're like me and we've got reverse cycle air, uh, we don't have we don't have reverse cycle. Sorry, we've got a rapid air conditioning, so it uses uh, water on the pads up, up top, and then the fan draws in that cool air, but it also comes with moisture, pumps moisture into the house, and it can affect the gear. So if you've got reverse cycle air conditioning, you don't really have to worry too much. Um, but what this is good for is, say, if you're out uh, travelling or you've gone out, out on a shoe and it's been bad bad weather and your gear's got really wet, what you can do is you dry your gear off with a towel and then put your gear into here and this will draw out the moisture and dry out your camera and then it's going to be perfectly good. You're not going to have uh, problems with uh, fungus or you know, mould building up on your elements with one of these, uh, so this is going to really look after you. Um, so yeah, if you're in humid conditions, uh, this will work perfectly. It protects uh, against from dust and dirt and everything because this is a nicely sealed unit and I think it actually looks pretty cool as well. So something like one of these units, um, I pay about seven or eight hundred dollars. I can't remember. I don't remember the number, number off the top of my head, but there's something around that sort of figure. And to get some something like this ship, because it is quite bulky and heavy, it's about I think it's about 25 to 30 kilos in weight for the cabinet itself, and it comes in a bigger bigger box than this. Um, yeah, that that wasn't cheap. That was about 150 dollars in shipping to get it from over east to live it here in Perth. Um, there are a few companies that sell them, uh, but there aren't many, so um, some of the places I recommend is probably B&H is being the main one, um, and I can't think of any others really off the top of my head. Um, there are a couple here in Perth, but I can't remember any real good ones. Uh, the company I bought this one from, they weren't the best. Um, they didn't even let me know they've shipped it off, um, they didn't give me a tracking number or anything. It was so vague and I didn't, I didn't even think I was going to get it, it took me two months to get this. So. Yeah, uh, I thought it was lost or damaged in, in shipping and they weren't doing anything about it. They have a really bad reputation, um, so yeah, I wish I'd read review, reviews before buying it. But anyway, now I've got the cabinet, I absolutely love it. So this is, uh, the brand of this is Suru, uh, Suru? I, I'm dyslexic, so it, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I'll, the title of it will be, I'll put this in the description down below as well. So this is the uh, HC110 uh, unit and it's got a six year warranty as well as I've just found out by reading that down there. Um, and yeah, it's a great cabinet. Um, they do come in two, uh, three different sizes. 
So this one is the, the middle size one. Um, and then you've got a smaller one which is about yay big. So that will fit nicely on your um, office desk or in, your cup or in a cupboard or something. Um, but then you've got another one which is even bigger, which has about another capacity on top of this. Um, but I didn't want anything too big and take up too much room. And if I want to, I do have this pretty loaded with gear at the moment and I will be getting more. So I might get another one of those cabinets and I can put that elsewhere in the office so it's not too bad. And it'll give me some flexibility over where I can actually put the stuff because maybe I want to leave this on the floor and then have another one on the desk. Um, yeah, so my voice is about going up to a few takes of this. Um, but hopefully you've uh, enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, if you'd like to ask anything, uh, make sure you pop it down in the comment section and I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button because it really helps out the channel nicely. And if you'd like to see more videos in the future, um, be sure to subscribe. Now, I won't be doing videos just on like this sort of stuff. Um, I'll be doing stuff like stuff I recommend. If I find something useful that has been beneficial for me, then I'll recommend it to you and I'll create, this, and I'll create some videos. Um, but mostly what it's going to be is my photography, you know, you coming out on location with me and I'll share how I got that photograph and the reason why and my, method, uh, my methods behind it. Um, and also sharing my, um, my sort of my travel, the adventure stuff as well. So I want to bring you along for the whole experience and not just parts of it. Um, and actually talk about, and when the days aren't going right, I can actually show that and uh, show the real life of what it's like to be a landscape photographer. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. And uh, anyway, I'm going to head off, so bye for now.